If you're studying for the INBDE, I highly recommend INBDE Bootcamp, an all-in-one study resource that will help you pass your exam. Use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here, and welcome back to Mental Dental. Thank you so much for checking out my YouTube channel or for coming back if you've been here before. Hey, I'm really excited because I have a brand new camera, so hopefully you can see me a little bit clearer and maybe you can even see a little bit more of the studio setup I have behind me. But anyway, hopefully it's a little bit of higher quality uh, moving forward for all of my one-on-one -on -one mentorship style videos. But more importantly, in this one, we're going to talk about the most important topics covered on the board exam. And I actually hear this quite often that, hey, Dr. Ryan, I understand that to give it my best possible effort that I need to know everything, but I'm short on time for preparation. I just want to know the most important topics. Can you just tell me that? And so I decided to create this video. And while we don't have a blueprint for exactly how many questions are asked on a specific topic, we do know, generally speaking, which topic areas are covered more. And this is because the INBDE is broken down into 10 foundation knowledge areas or science categories and three clinical content areas or the clinical dentistry categories. Each question is assigned at least one of those foundation knowledge areas and at least one of the clinical content areas. For example, foundation knowledge area 10 is called research methodology and analysis and informatics tools. And one of the three clinical content areas is oral health management. So within the oral health management category, there is this subcategory called prevention, diagnosis, and management of temporomandibular disorders. So a theoretical question that combines these two topic areas could present a let's say cohort study that hypothesizes a relationship between headaches and temporomandibular disorders. And your job in this question is to interpret the data presented in a table from that study. So that would be an example of that FK10 and the clinical content area called 35. So anyway, that's an example of a practice question that's pulling from one of those foundation knowledge areas and one of those clinical content areas. Considering the percentage of questions that are allocated to each foundation knowledge area and each clinical content area, which we do know in the candidate guide, I've determined the top five topics that you should dedicate the most time and attention to. So number one is pathology. This topic focuses on recognizing the normal range of clinical findings and distinguishing deviations from normal that require monitoring, treatment, or management. This is not only caries and periodontal disease, but developmental disturbances of the teeth, bone and soft tissues, bacterial infections, viral infections, fungal infections, rashes, blisters, bumps, sores, cysts, tumors, cancer, and everything in between. The board examiners are ensuring that you're able to perform a thorough head and neck examination, a complete intraoral examination, an accurate radiographic examination, and be able to interpret and evaluate your findings. I have two video series covering this topic. I have oral pathology, which I made several years ago, and oral diagnosis, which is my newest video series that I'm currently releasing videos for on this channel. Both of them are very, very high yield, and I highly recommend that you spend a lot of time watching, learning, and memorizing the information that I teach in those two series, because pathology is undoubtedly one of the most important topics covered on the board exam. Number two is ethics. Now, this topic focuses on the five ethical principles in dentistry, those being patient autonomy, non-maleficence, beneficence, justice, and veracity. And it covers how to apply those principles 
in day-to-day -day practice. This includes everything from maintaining patient records to responding to challenging scenarios. There are a surprisingly high number of ethics questions on the exam, so my ethics video series is something you should absolutely be watching at least once, if not more than that. The good news is it's one of the shorter series that I've done, and it teaches directly out of the ADA principles of ethics and code of conduct, so it's all very high yield and won't even take you that long to get through. Topic number three is pharmacology. Now, this topic focuses on learning about the many pharmacological agents used in the treatment of dental patients, but also medications that dental patients might be taking for common medical issues like hypertension and diabetes. My pharmacology series concentrates on medication names, categories, and mechanisms of action. That is what most of the exam questions are going to be asking about. But you also wanna know how to anticipate, prevent, and manage complications from pharmacological agents in patient care. You wanna know how certain medications interact with one another and much more. So this is another video series I would absolutely prioritize and get ready to make a lot of flashcards along with that. Topic number four, is oral medicine and medical emergencies. So this topic focuses on the dental treatment of medically complicated patients, whether it's hypertension, diabetes, antibiotic prophylaxis, hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, bleeding disorder, COPD, and many, many more. There are so many medical issues that can complicate our treatment recommendations and interventions for our dental patients. So recognizing the manifestations of systemic diseases and how a disease and its management may affect the delivery of dental care is critically important, especially when it comes to emergency situations like syncope, hyperventilation, stroke, or heart attack. I talk about all of these things and much more in my oral medicine series, as well as the medical emergencies video in my oral surgery series. And lastly, topic number five is research and biostatistics. This topic focuses on research design, data interpretation, research bias, null hypothesis, and many more, frankly, difficult concepts. But I also want to announce in this video for the first time that I'm really excited to be releasing another brand new series coming very soon on biostatistics. So you can look forward to that series in the upcoming months. In that series, I will distill down and simplify the many difficult concepts found in the research, biostatistics, and evidence-based dentistry subject areas. So there you have it. We have five topics that I really want you to focus on and prioritize as you're studying and preparing for this board exam. But guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I loved doing it from Charlotte, North Carolina with the brand new camera in the recording studio. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like below and comment telling me which maybe subject area of those five you're most excited to learn about or you're most nervous to learn about. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's so much content coming out and already out on this channel that I don't want you to miss anything. So make sure if you're not already, subscribe to the channel and share it with your classmates and friends so they don't miss out either. Guys, that's it for this video. Keep studying, keep working hard, and I'll see you in the next one.